Right, well, we're back live with Gus Mackay. Gus, can you hear me in the studio there? Yes, David. Oh, wow. It, it's such a, a treat to have live music because you very. I don't think we've had anyone live on this show since we had you and Cry in the studio, and that was way back when. Wow. Just because we were uh, talking about it back um, in the Studio One here, tell us a little bit about your upbringing before we get you to, to play. What was it like growing up on that farm? Well, like I said, we had to work hard, <laughs> which which has come to pass that all my siblings and myself have worked pretty hard and um, to get what we wanted. And so, yeah, it was it was a good time, and it wasn't too many problems. And we we go around, and Dad picks up when it's hot, and we go around and swim the river, and <laughs> yeah, it's pretty idyllic, really. Um, and uh, go to the be- beach for holidays for a couple couple of weeks. Um, yeah, no, it was. W- were you working a lot of the time, or or did you get a little bit of a work life? <laughs> it's a bit strange when you're a ten year old. Yeah, but did you right. get a work life uh, balance of that? Age? Oh yeah, no, we didn't, didn't work all the time, but we were expected to work sheep. <laughs> yeah, so there, there would be days when you'd work like a full day on the sheep and no. stuff like that. No, just no, part day. No, just, just be drafting sheep. So you had, <laughs> I'm being slightly tongue in cheek, but yeah, you, 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 had, you had it easy then in your yeah. own <laughs> <laughs> Drafting sheep and loading sheep and, uh, and tailing sheep, tailing lambs, so marking time. They had to use the truth up. Gus Mackay is my guest. He is, I'm going to use the word legendary. Anyone who's been a stockman and now sings the blues is a legend in my book. He's my guest today at Cam Glen Radio. And we can get you to sing the first track if you would. Are you going to do Ginger in Morning first? Good. I'm glad you reminded me. I'm ready to do that one. You better well, remind me of the next one too. I can count you in if you want. Okay. Here we go. Three, two, one.
Something about hearing that live is just amazing. I love the steel guitar, especially. Wow. It's, you know, it sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, we, we all listen to CDs, obviously, but there's something so different about hearing it live and playing it live. It just got a totally different vibe almost to it. Fantastic. Really like that. Yeah, that well, to be honest, I played it pretty well. I was, I was happy I played it. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You know. <laughs> well, you've done okay, that's all I'm saying. But uh, Can I jump you forward a little bit in time? Because obviously you spent a lot of your life as a stockman. W- what point did you um, pick up the guitar and start playing blues? Oh, you mentioned the, the country punk band. That's where I first learned the three chord trick. I mean, to be fair, we were talking about that off the air, but you were you were in a country punk music band. Yeah. That would have been what in your twenties, would it? Or yeah, so yeah. it was like 1980, 81, yeah. 79, 81. And I did, and I wrote some good songs in that band. But and I could have gone on a bit, I suppose. But farming, family, wife. Um, I was yeah. I wasn't until really till I got divorced that I started playing music <laughs> again. I didn't. Yeah, and that was ninety four, ninety three, and then. Um, Is that where you learnt your craft in in the punk band? Or well, sort of, to play? Yeah, because yeah, I was really just a bit of a strummer, really. Yeah. But I I wrote songs when I was seventeen, um, and I, the the band was a sort of catalyst for me to get my my act together, and to start playing, uh, start learning the craft, really, I suppose. Because I'm not good at um, reading books. I've got a thousand books, but I never read them. <laughs> Join the club. Yeah, exactly. Guitar books and like, there's all these things. I learned a few things which I've pulled out, but generally I'm just a, you know, I like the, like the challenge of not knowing what you're doing and <laughs> working out something really cool. Did, did you have um, any success with the band in the early days, or was it just a kind of local thing that you did for a while? Yeah, but it was good because there was a lot more people around then, so we had a, an audience, a local audience, but I mean, the players were like that good. Um, well, anyway. I don't think any pa- punk band in the big and the. No, well, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> I think that was the point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we fast forward in time. Um, you got divorced, as you say. At what point did you decide that you were going to take up the blues professionally? Well, I think I've only just started now. <laughs> <laughs> like the last couple of years or so? No, no this week. <laughs> 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 yeah, I've never really. Uh, that's what's so good about coming over here is because you, you can't like, go to the farm. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, no, it's just the fact that um, there's there's actually a career. I've almost got a career, that's the way I see it, uh, and, and I think I like that idea. <laughs> besides this kind of the occasional thing, are you still farming, or is it just the kind no, of what, the no, odd thing? So this is yeah. this is like. Yeah. Um, so do you see yourself uh, seeing your days out to singing the blues? Playing music anyway. Yeah, oh, good. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah. I would like to do that. I mean, I've, I like sort of physical work, but you know, everyone we're all getting older, so. But the gold mine keeps me pretty <laughs> busy. Um, oh, you got a gold mine? Yeah. Well, he said a, casually. Yeah, gold <laughs> tenement. I've yeah, got three tenements. And, Does it make any money? Well, I only had it for a year, but like most businesses, they take eighteen months to fail, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> we actually where I live um, a lot of people don't know this in, in Lead Hills which is South Lanarkshire we do have gold up in them there hills but uh, so far I personally not seen any so I think it might mm. be a myth run by the no it's not a myth run by the local hotel it's not fair there is gold up there but uh, well maybe get you up there one one that's year not, and you can, you can help us out <laughs> <laughs> Mother Nature doesn't want you to get it basically. yeah that's what I heard yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of prospectors and <laughs> it's a good business for people selling prospecting. Yeah, yeah. And, and hotel rooms and stuff. Like yeah. That. Well, should we hear your, your second track? Are you going to do 100 Acres next? Yes. That's great. Got a thought to what to do. <laughs>
Plus the starboard, the good plows go. And the more I kiss the plow, and the more I kiss the plow, and the more I kiss the plow. Some secrets with some stones left in a field with a murder of crowns. He's locked in the tractor, mom tied to the stove. All this land one day is gonna be yours. Hundred more acres to plow. Hundred more acres to plow. Hundred more acres to plow. Or blow for blows. For blows. Just loving that steel guitar, just amazing. <laughs> it's so different. I said this earlier on, but it's so different when that is um, when it's kind of live. I mean, you just can't capture that in the same way on a CD somehow. No. But uh, having said that, Gus does have a, a great CD called Talisman, and you can get it from all the usual sources or download it, I imagine. Well, Tess, Tess has snuck in the studio. <laughs> How are you finding the old steel guitar? Oh, really good. It's a bit bit different from what we uh, what you usually have at, um, at Cam Game Radio, I'd say. Yeah, definitely. I've not seen one before. <laughs> Gus, what we're going to do is take a break because we've got a couple of announcements here. Then we'll come back. And I think the next on the list is the Fallen Down. So we'll maybe come back for that in a couple of minutes. Fallen Down. Fallen Down. <laughs> Step over me You know I'm falling down Like a bee. 
suis là pour passer le temps Gus Mackay is my guest, Australian stockman. You're probably tired of me saying that, stockman and blue <laughs> blues man. Yeah. Gus, tell us a little bit about the process of writing a song. Do you uh, sort of sit under a tree and write a song? How does it work? I mean, that's a perennial question, isn't it? People always ask artists that. And most people say, oh, can the music starts with the music. But really, for me, it starts with an idea. And then, so I write down, say, a verse, a, couple, a, couple, a chorus and a few verses, and then I might, I'll pick up you know, this guitar or that guitar and work out which one fits the best, really. So for me, it's probably the words, but if I get a good uh, progression, I'll, I'll put music to the song, uh, lyrics to that as well. But generally, it's just, I've got this idea I want to flesh out. I mean, I've got probably, for the new album, I've got probably 10 or 12 songs. Um, to sort of explore. Do the, do the ideas sort of come to you just any time, or is it like you sit down and specifically try and write? Sometimes I'll just say something out loud, and that will be the beginning of the song. Oh, okay. To so myself, I'll just say something that, that fits with my thoughts. <laughs> like, I can't think of what now. Um, <clears throat> or I'll see something. I mean, I've got... Yeah, it's just... One of the radio guys said to me, you just, like, pick up... You're a sponge, aren't you? You watch people. And I said, well, I do. I, I just pick up human... Um, yeah. Is that Front part... Is. is part of that just the natural upbringing that you had? It's just... It kind of comes naturally? Possibly. I never thought about it. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> testing you, Dave. But that's all right. I don't mind. I mean, that's what I like. I mean, I got a review in America last week, week before... And the guy said, and I've never heard this before, so I don't care. Wait, this is someone's view, isn't it, really? Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter what I think. <laughs> um, but he said, oh, there's a lot of guys doing this sort of um, Americana blues pop. Um, but this guy does it, and he said, this guy does it really well. <laughs> so that's all right, but just the, the adding the pop. You're not happy on that? <laughs> well, no, I understand what he's saying, mm. you know, because it's not, it's not strictly blues, it's sort of, Yes, it's, it's crossover. That's what it is. Uh -huh. You know, it's crossover. I'm staying away from the blues because it's really boring. <laughs> I'm trying to make it interesting. So I know what he's saying, but I don't think. I mean, Americana blues, yeah, but pop probably not. But that's okay. You know, so he's someone's. <laughs> 
the, challenging me with pop. The, the most um, profound thing that I heard along those lines, which actually I said when I was about eight years old, was someone asked me which artists that I liked. And I said, well, it's not so much, I didn't say it in these words, but not so much the artist, it's a particular piece of music at the end of the day that counts. And, uh, you know, if it's great, it's great. And, and, and if it's not, it's not. Uh, in a second, we'll, we'll kind of wrap up with the, the last chat you're going to do for us today, which is The Muse. But I just wanted to, to mention, you've got a website, right? Oh, yeah. What's the web address for that? Oh, it's gusofk.com. Is it dot .com? I th- okay. I've got two, so dot .com and dot .com.au. Okie dokie. So are they both, both the same, work, are they? Both all? work, yeah. yeah. I was quite impressed that you have all your vintage cars on there, yeah. which I thought, I, it just kind of uh, tickled me because it, it kind of adds a, a layer of authenticity about you. That that's your interest and you you put it on there to, to share with people. Yeah. Well, listen, I want to thank you so much for coming in and sharing your music with us today, telling us a little bit about your life as a stockman. Uh, the entire session and interview will be on our Listen Again, CamerlinRadio.org, hopefully by about Monday. At some point, we'll also have uh, the video edited, and I think we put that on our Facebook page. Uh, the, tr- the album that these tracks come from is called Talisman, available from all the usual places. CD baby, sorry. CD baby. C- CD, okay. CD baby. Okay, yeah. uh, great. It's called CD baby. baby yeah. Okay. But if you want vinyl, you can just go to my website and send me a message. There you go. Yeah. Uh, I'm the vinyl man. Doesn't get much better than that when you can actually uh, contact the artist directly. So, great. Can I get you to do uh, the last track today of the Muse? Sure. <laughs> That I'm great and not be joking. She could be my inspiration. What she's thinking, no one can say. A smile is like a breaking wave. the ocean Her eyes can hold you for a while Seems like a lifetime Her heart is in your hand It's just a beating like a lifetime Your heart is in our hands It's just stop beating <laughs> 